Okay. Now it has a tinsel body, so I'll use extra care for my underbody. Okay, let's see. Stop right there. And we're good. Oh, here they are. Peggy, okay, this is Cheryl. Are, are these ever tied on hooks that aren't quite so long, like a 3X? Uh, yes, you could do, use a shorter hook and make a smaller, like a real nice short casting streamer. Yeah, you could. Now, tinsel. Let's see, I'm going to use, this is a size 12 tinsel. Um, it just happens to be what I have in the camper, so. <laughs> yeah. This is a, uh, oops, let me get it under here. It's a Danville's Mylar that I use. Okay. And we're gonna put silver out. And for those that are just joining us on Facebook, because it's a little late, you started with a white base, then you yeah. did. Uh, two row, two layers. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Now, let's see if I got this right. Yep. There we go. And if anybody's tying along, Peggy is a swift tire. Just tell her to oh, slow down. Oh, <laughs> just <and> slow down. <laughs> swift. This is well, I do. Is, yeah. This is uh, this is relaxed, and so um, yeah, just just step in and say I need to catch up, and that's fine. Yeah. If anybody is tying with me, the key to doing the tinsel body: make sure you keep the same tension on the tinsel. Okay. If you lose your tension tension or you drop your end and it'll just spring off okay and you don't want that to happen Peggy visited up in Alaska and she left it uh, just so the ends of it, this giant spool of tinsel and Peggy we're yeah. still using it you're still using it yes I got that from a uh, museum they thought I could use it it was kind of there were two of them yeah. and uh I'm still using all of it. And then I bought a box of tinsel before I came down here. So I have sort of a lifetime supply now. Well, I think we have several people's lifetime supply in Alaska still. <laughs> That's right. Depends on whose life, right? That's yeah. what I always say. <laughs> Whoop. Okay. There we go. Seems like you use the silver quite a bit more frequently than the you do. Silver. Yeah, I. Uh, although at one time when I started tying, these copper was the color everybody was using. It was like a big popular. It's kind of like hairstyles and clothes and stuff like that. Um, but you're right, silver was during the 40s when these were all designed, that was the big color. And so I sometimes wonder when you see a lot of stuff like that, did they really have a choice? You know, it could be that's all they had. Now I'm gonna take some yellow bucktail and uh, just you get take, them off. Take that off the middle or the end or? This or is just... out of the middle and this is a bucktail that my dog got a hold of. So she kind of cut the end off for me. And I'm just 
kind of using everything except the very base. This is the only thing she actually steals from me. So it's kind of a, now I want it to just go back into the curve of the hook. So I've got my length and then I'm gonna cut it. So I remember you saying before that you don't necessarily buy the real fancy, beautiful, long bucktail. You I don't know. I get the rejects from a guy in New Jersey. He, um, he actually supplies a lot of very well-known saltwater tires. And they like, you know, stuff that's six and eight inches long. I want two to three. There we go. All right. Yeah, I got a little stray hair there. If you dye your own, what's the best dye to use? Um, I have Corian, I have like solid surface counters with off-white sinks, so I'm not allowed to dye, but mm. I would probably use Vineyard's dye. Um, Can you seems use to Easter be... egg dye? You could. I've actually tried that. Um, I ended up with more on me than I did on the feathers, and then some of it didn't wasn't quite color fast. The other thing you could do is dye with Kool-Aid. Uh -huh. That's a, yeah. a interesting concept. Kool-Aid is color fast. Yeah. Now, let's see. In this, I've got four feathers here. We're gonna have the red goes closest to the hook and the yellow is the outer wing. So I need to put these together the right direction. And I'm gonna make my red a little bit bigger so that it will show through, okay? I want it to show through a lot on this particular fly. And let's see, let's cut the ends here. We, we lost the fly, Peggy. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I just hit the thing, that's why, hold on. Let me get my... Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I just hit them. Thank you. There we go. We're back. Okay. We're back. I just hit something and jiggled it. Okay. So that's the red. Let me shorten it up a little bit. It's a little bit long. So are you what. using Schloppen then? Uh, no, this is a saddle hackle. This is a Whiting American. Um, but it's a little bit shorter hook than I usually use. It uh, looks like a beautiful feather. It, uh, this is a, here it is, a Whiting American. And let's see if I can get it in the front here where you can see it. Whiting, and this is a rooster saddle. You can use the capes, but I've just always used the saddles. They have a little bit more feel to them. And the stem is a little bit finer. So I come out with a really teeny head. Now, I have my two red here and I've got my closest yellow lined up. See how I've got it just showing a little bit extra over on the tip. Now flip this guy over, put him in the back. Now, Let's see. There we go. So the outside ones are with the, the top side out in the Yeah. Corner. Yeah. They both have the good side is facing out. Okay. And then it makes like a little sandwich. I guess is the best way to describe it. Okay. Now I take my two to go to the back. I hold them like that, okay? And put them on a flat surface. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in there to hold them together. And then I've got this one here, just like that. All right, let's see. 
And then I have my fabric fusion glue. I'll put a little of that on something. Get this napkin here. There we go. I have a really teeny work surface here. It's like a TV stand. <laughs> oh. There. What you do is you just put the glue on the very, where the two feathers meet and a little bit on the stem, okay? Just kind of run your bodkin over that. And we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes to let it dry. Do this one. There we go. I, uh, whoops, it came together. Yeah, we'll just let those sit for a few minutes and let me get that out of here. Those are too long. Can I ask a question about the sure. fabric fusion? Yeah. Um, the first one is, I know it comes in real big bottles and some real nice tiny bottles. It does the right. big bottle dry out before you get to it or change consistency? Um, it doesn't, no, not if you get the cap on right. That's why I use it actually. A friend of mine was using rubber cement and I had awful trouble with rubber cement because it would dry out and one jar got hard all the way to the bottom. Yeah. This has the same consistency as rubber cement, but it doesn't get rock hard. It, um, I usually just put it on a piece of parchment paper, but I'm out of that right now. Um, and it works good. I, I know it's waterproof and everything else. It's made for putting uh, designs on. When you're making like quilts or clothes, like a sweatshirt, and you want designs on it, you glue them on with this stuff. And then, uh, so we want to be careful and not overdo it with it because it might affect how the fly swims and it's not going to come off, <laughs> right? Uh, no, but you know, when they these things were originally made, she used to glue the wings onto the sides of the body and everything. I mean, she was a hat maker by trade and tied with no vice. There we go. Cool. All right, sorry. Wings, we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Let's see. Was the Mickey Doodle her name for the fly? Do you know, I'm not sure what the history is on this because it's the same pattern as a Mickey Finn, uh -huh. but with feathers, okay? There we go, we're nice and straight. Good. Now, this fly does have a cheek on it or a shoulder. When I gave um, the gal who does our Facebook stuff, when I gave her the pattern, I didn't think I had the pieces with me or the feathers. So I said, oh, well, we can just leave them off. And then I discovered, oh, gee, I got a bunch of them. So I'm going to use, instead of using a duck that's been dyed red, I'm going to use, this is just a hen hackle. We'll make a little cheek right there. Yeah, just like that. There we go. I think it's the right one. And Peggy, I don't know, um, what was the name of the um, lady who did the fly, the hat maker? Oh, yes, Carrie Stevens. Carrie well Stevens, known. thank you. Yeah. She, uh, she actually tied them without a vice. She did everything wow. by in hand. 
And I've tried tying in hand, like for a salmon fly or something. And when they're small, it's not that difficult. I can't imagine though, doing the body on a really long streamer without anything to hold on to the hook, you know, except your other hand. You do get better thread control when you tie without a vise. I discovered that. Okay, now let's see. I think, wait a minute, I have to get up a minute and just get some jungle cock. Let's see what I got here. Nope, I have everything else but. Hold on, I'll be right back, folks. I forgot an item. There. Let's see. Hold on. I'll just switch myself to me. There we go. Cool. Be right back. We'll admire that she's able to tie salmon flies in a camper on a <laughs> tiny table. <laughs> My, 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 no, I, and have all your stuff. Well, what one thing about it, you can't, you can actually lose stuff. You can because you sit other stuff on top of it, but I'm trying to thin down. So I'm kind of where, where, where are your dogs? Oh, they're on the floor. They're right here. They're within inches of me. Wow. They, um, if this was a meeting, Pete would be trying to sit in my lap. He likes to get see himself on the computer. Yeah. Uh, whoops, there it is. Good. There. All right, we got our eyes there. Good. That looks good. Yeah. Now I'll take two of these and I pick, when I pick the jungle cock, I pick out two that match, okay, from the same row on the skin and then they come out the same size and I don't have to worry about moving stuff around and everything else. Are you concerned with the actual proportion of the eye or just getting two that look nice and match? Just two that look nice together. It's kind of funny. I had an attorney in a class I was teaching one time. He just couldn't understand that two identical items are the same. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> good. All right, I'm going to switch back. Yeah. All right. Now, I have two. I got a right and a left here. What I do is um, see all this rough stuff on the edge. I'm going to take peel that back, so I get a nice clean eye to go on here. Yeah, I gotta make sure I'm in the picture when I do this, because there we go. So is this technically a salmon fly or a trout fly or does it? Um, trout or in, and in Maine, they use them for landlocked, what they call landlocked salmon. It's a salmon that doesn't go out to, back out to the ocean. It just hangs around in Maine all winter. Yeah. So it kind of. But was it used for trout also? Yes, yeah, oh yeah. Big rainbow trout. No. Yeah, perfect. Now, let me switch my thread over here. Oops. There we go. Now I'll take my fancy scissors here, hang on here, and let me just snip. Those are fancy because they're real thin and fine. Yeah, they um, come from Italy, and I know the guy that came up with. Oh crap! I just cut my thread. I know the guy that came up with the design for them. 
And so he gave me a very attractive price on those. I couldn't resist. And I've been trying them out. And then there's some other tools too. There's a, um, a metallic, like a plate that you can put all the tools on. And there's about four different styles of scissors. Go. But these are ultra sharp. So I just know I'm gonna stab myself with them someday. They're pretty cool. And there's a curved pair as well. Is, this, is that Mattarelli? No, it's called Copter Flies. The guy actually works for a helicopter company and he's in charge of all the quality control. And he just didn't like other scissors. He ties salmon flies um, and never uses tools. All he uses is the scissors, that's it. The rest of it's all done in hand. And so he made them um, mostly because he couldn't find something that he could use for, for what he does. And so they're really pretty good. I kind of like them. So let's we'll finish this. There we go. They really get right in there and cut stuff really fine and they'll cut a lot of material. Like sometimes you get fancy scissors. They won't cut a lot of heavy stuff. These will. They're really quite, there we go. Cool. And so that's our Mickey Doodle upside down, right side up. It's actually a very, because of the color scheme on this fly, it's really a favorite fishing fly. I, um, I like this and I also like the um, black nose dace is my other one that I've had great luck with. Are there any questions? Let me just switch my glasses around here. Do you ever use UV to make the head? Shiny? Yes. I do. I just got a bunch of that solary stuff. Uh -huh. And I have to admit, when I first got it, before I got it, I thought I'm never going to like this stuff, you know, because I don't, didn't, you really wasn't using a lot of it. And I had really bad luck with epoxy as well. But I'm finding that the solar is, it dries and it's nice and shiny and it's not tacky. Like some of them are pretty tacky. I don't know. They, and they use, oh, you can cover it with nail polish to fix that. Well, how about if we just make the product work good the first time, you know? Let's see. I think I read something too about with the thread putting a yellow stripe on it, but maybe that was a particular tire. Um, yeah, mo all of the Carrie Stevens, they used to have a band on the head. Um, it was different colors over the years. It started out as yellow, then it became orange. And then th in the end, she was making it red but that's considered her trademark. Mm -hmm. And so most people don't use it. Yeah, so no. the, whatever tire I saw that he was probably imitating one of her early flies and didn't know it was Exactly, the there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Evelyn says um, she also invented the gray ghost. Yeah, she did. That's probably her most famous fly. There's 133 flies that have been definitely identified as hers. And I've done all of them. I actually had a guy buy a set of them from me. And it took me a little over a year to make them all. Um, it sounded, you know, the, the guy was at the Somerset fly fishing show and I said, oh, this would be an easy project. You know, it could take just a couple of months. And a couple of months later, I'm still like, holy cow, how many more do I have to do? And, uh, it's not a speedy process, but it was a great learning, learning curve for it. Were there any that required materials that were difficult to get? Um, not really. I mean, I had like, for instance, a golden pheasant and a few other things, and you just sort of start picking away at stuff. You do use a lot of materials, so a lot. Is there just the one book on her flies? No, there are probably five or six now. And they all say exactly the same thing, okay? But this one, um, the care, the one by Hilliard, Graydon Hilliard, he actually owns her company. He was researching for the original book and she sold her company to a gentleman in 
Tamworth, New Hampshire, and he called him to get some information about what he was doing. And he sold him the whole company for like a dollar. You know, that was it. He was done with it. His wife was done with the business, everything. So it kind of... How long was she in business and did she actually, was it a pretty successful business for her? It was, well, she was the only one and her husband was a guide. So she had like a really good marketing program. It was one of the leading guides in the area. Mm -hmm. So everybody that fished with him bought and then they would go home and talk about how, back then people used to like, they would catch a dozen fish a day and just, they didn't eat them. They didn't put them back or anything. It was just purely for bragging rights. And uh, now it's a little different when you go fish that area. And, uh, but that's how she, basically how she, how she got so well known was she had the right connection. So let's see. Did, did anybody tie along tonight? Yes, what do we got here? Let's oh, see. Joanne did, can I, can I highlight you Joanne? Yes, yeah. Well, we can try. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see what we have um, here. I didn't really have the materials you needed mm -hmm. for this, but I did have a rooster that died. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so he donated some feathers. Oh, nice. Are, oh, what beautiful feathers he's got, though. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. It's got Ooh. black. He was a very generous donor for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the skunk got with done with him, this is what I got. <laughs> oh no! Oh, what goodness. was the rooster's name? It was Duke. <laughs> Duke, huh? <laughs> That's the name of your fly, then. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> That's right. There I like go. the black and white. Yeah, I like that too. It's the Duke of Hazard. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. Or Duke from oh. Hazard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see, did anybody else? Oh, oh Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. All right, okay. Evelyn. Let's put your. Oh, oh nice. Cool. What do you got there? Oh, let's see. Aha. Oh, look at this. Oh. She's got a piece of paper in the background. Nice. Nice job. Cool. There you go. You she drew it. I yeah. drew it. Oh, good. <laughs> I like that. that Very is good. Great. Yeah. You drew it Thank while you. you were tying it. That's pretty good, Evelyn. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always need an illustrator. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to sign you up for something. I don't know, but now that I know this, you're in trouble. I know. <laughs> <laughs> a logo and name tags. Here uh -huh, we come. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I could see that on a hat. Anybody else mm -hmm. tying tonight? Karen. Oh, look at Karen did too. Oh, my goodness. You have to pin it. Okay, there we go. Do it again, Karen. We didn't see it. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, oh, nice. Wow. Oh good, and you've got instructions and everything. Very good, nice. Wow. Good job. This is a, a on-the-top crew. I know it. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you're muted, Karen. Oh, she's muted. Sorry, I didn't have any oh. of the materials, so I figured I would um, write the instructions step by step. There you go. There's actually a gentleman from South Africa. He just published a book, which is a fly tying book, and he illustrated the whole thing himself. Actually, I bought a copy just so I could get the illustrations because he does nice stuff. <laughs> Was he doing Atlantic salmon flies? Uh, no, it's a, just basic fly tying. It's the uh, the feather mechanic is the name of the book. And um, he starts at the beginning. He does, he's doing um, salmon flies now. And that's going to be, I suspect he's got another book coming is what's, what's going to happen. And so I'll end up buying more stuff instead of getting rid of stuff. <laughs> the way it works. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know it. Any other questions? I think we figured out your orange mm -hmm. lipstick problem tonight, Peggy. What is that? You have a filter because when you look down, yeah, you have, you have eyebrows drawn on and you have orange lipstick. And oh when my you gosh, look, your lips and your eyebrows change stay. color. Oh no! <laughs> so you had eyebrows in your hair, and you had. Lips. Oh no! 
bouncing on the screen. Um, oh my goodness, because it's it was, it was part of the entertainment, but huh. we, I just noticed that tonight and Nancy. Oh, Wilson. I'll have to um, take a look because it's HP laptop and I just got it. Yeah, wow. so yeah. I'm not you sure. You were complaining that all your lips were orange. I know. I, I thought it was the chapstick, and I was like, hmm, no. this is interesting. No, yeah. it's not. It's Mr. HP, huh? It's Mr. HP <laughs> is giving you great eyebrows and orange lips. Oh, okay. Not when you look down. Did anybody there you else go. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The dancing guy. eyebrows. Oh, that's great. There you go. <laughs> what you want to do is bring this baby to the group. Yeah. Wait a minute. Some, is somebody saying something? Yeah, he's yeah. got to speak louder. <laughs> a little bit louder. Okay. Uh, you want to um, go to the stop video at the bottom, click the up arrow. Yeah. Then pick settings. Oh, yeah. Then you'll find uh -huh. it says something about backgrounds, about right down in the middle. And that right. you want to go in there, and, and then you can uncheck the one that's that's giving you all the good stuff. Oh, okay. All right. So I have, let's see. I have no virtual background. Let's see. I have a green screen. Nope. Studio effects. Let's see what we That's got. where it is. Oh, yeah. there it is. Let's put none for eyebrows, none for oh. mustache, and none yeah. for lip color. <laughs> I found it. Oh, you thank did you. find it. Okay, now I'm going to highlight you, and I bet you don't yeah. have orange lips. Look at that. It mm -hmm. was not your chapstick. <laughs> there you go. Oh, cool. Ha, it's fixed. So but I could I have like those nice tattooed eyebrows. <laughs> I do like, and they were lovely eyebrows, I must say. Oh, okay. <laughs> a nice shape, right? <laughs> I know. I didn't realize that people, there's a guy that ties flies. It's also a tattoo artist. And that's a lot of what he does is eyebrows. And I'm like, why would you want them tattooed on? You know, well, you don't I have know. to keep drawing them in when right. they disappear. Hmm. There you go. How do you fish cool. your, this fly? How and this where? Fly? Yeah. Oh, this we fish, but um, it's a cold water fly. I do river fishing. Okay, cast it across, let it drift down, and then kind of give it a few tugs back. You can also use your rod tip to move it around in the water. You want to make it swim, okay? And the other thing you can do is you control it. You can let out a lot of line behind you if you've got a boat and row around like a lake or something like that. Early season flies. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have questions about that beautiful fly? Oh, I should put it back up. Let's see here. I just have the eyebrows on the fly now. No. <laughs> there we go. Well, I know I I uh, I didn't realize that. Thanks, Al, because she yeah. complained about those orange lips. I know. I was like, what's this orange lips here? There's a bunch I of other have... there's a bunch mm. of other cool things you can do as well, Sandy. Oh yeah. Hmm. I could change my hair color and everything, I'll bet, you know. Oh wow. Don't there do you that. go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep I it. just checked and I can't do it on the Mac, so mm -hmm. I gotta get to an HP to get a mustache. Oh, there you go. There you go. Or be Italian. One or the oh, other. Yeah. That's, I, can, uh, I can attest to this color working really well. We use it quite a bit in Alaska. In fact, some of the, they just call them coho flies, but they're. Oh, okay. They're there you go. Red, really well. I think because the yellow makes it more visible, but it still just appears like a little hmm. bit. And that's the yellow and the, and the red. Um, yeah, Cheryl? yellow and red. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sometimes I use the UV bucktail. UV. Oh, yeah. But, you know, maybe that scares them, too. <laughs> has, well. it, has, has anybody died with, with Kool-Aid? Has anybody done that? I was just curious about that. Cheryl, you have? Yeah, we dyed some um, snowshoe hair with it. Ah. Works pretty well. And it, I, yeah. I dyed one of my white terriers with Kool-Aid one time to make fun of a dog show I was at. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I put her in a colored terrier class. Oh, there you go. It's different cool. from the Jack Russell classes. So it worked. There you go. I didn't know you were here with us. I, I just joined a little while ago. I've, I've had a shoulder issue. 
Oh, I'm not, not kind, but anyway, I just joined to say hi to everybody. How, how Beautiful nice. fly, Hello. Peggy. Thank I'm you. Go back, go back and watch it on Facebook, Susan. I, you could whip out a bunch of these. Well, it'll be a yeah. while before I'm tying. I'm sorry about that. Oh. Yeah, well, oh, you know, no. it's just the way, the way it is. This is a sign of age when you fall apart. Oh. <laughs> I can oh, share a really ugly picture of my shoulder, but I won't. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh -oh. How long did the dye last on the terrier? The oh, it lasted maybe a week. Mm. You know, I did it to make, I did it, a friend of mine who was a terrier judge and he was, I did it to play a joke oh on my, my friend who was judging the, tri the, the trial. Oh my God. She was, she was an ugly little terrier that wouldn't win any classes anyway. So I put her in the colored mm. terrier class. Of which there were few, and she actually got a ribbon because there were too few dogs for her not to. Oh my goodness! She got, she got the worst ribbon in the class, <laughs> but mm -hmm. she was in there. <laughs> there you so, go. Well, I've funny. heard that the Kool Aid does not wash out of human hair very well. No. Well, that's well, why when you when kids yeah. spill Kool Aid on the floor, it stays in the carpet for the life mm. of the building. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this this did fade, and you know she wasn't. She wasn't anything fancy, Very so good. I didn't care what she there looked like go. for a while. <laughs> I, I don't know if there is that yellow colored Kool-Aid though. Maybe. No. No, no, I don't know. I dyed nugget, I dyed uh, tatty pink. Pink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. My students that, that color is saffron. If you use saffron rice oh. Uh, oh, color. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it is that bright. It certainly would yeah. work. Yeah, saffron's very expensive, but I guess for fly tying, it'd be worth it, huh? <laughs> there you go. That's right. Yeah. Just, just because it is fly tying, it automatically is expensive, Susan. I mean, that's right. So, you know, <laughs> well, what the yeah. heck is saffron? Why not? <laughs> yeah. um, right. Peggy, hey, can you show us what your, um, your, uh, Jungle cock skin looks like the whole Oh, yeah. Skin. Yeah. This is my. Because they're really pretty tiny. Whoops. Right? There we go. This one has a good selection of sizes on it. I, um, I have a place in New Jersey where I buy all of my jungle cock from. Mm. Uh, Whitewater flies. I've been buying mm -hmm. from him now for 10 years, he's informed me. And this one I carry, I have a little portable kit for salmon fly tying, and this one, this one came out of that. Hmm. Yeah. So gonna... Peggy, do you know what the status of jungle cock is? Are they a domestic bird? Are they from India? Uh, is that right? They're actually, most of them are from India, India, uh -huh. India or Eastern Europe. But there's okay. a guy in Maine that actually raises them. Because ah, I tried okay. to buy, he used to sell, you could buy the eggs. The, oh, wow. the bird living, you know, it'd be delivered yeah. to your house living. Wow. But you had to have a separate building for each one was the problem. That's where I had oh, to Oh, because they're fighting cocks? Yeah, they are. That's yeah. what they're for. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, as long as, and he didn't care if what you were going to use it for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's in a, it's a little town in Maine huh. and it's up near the Canadian border. So people yeah. come from both sides. But yeah, this sure. is less yeah. than 10 inches long, isn't it? Isn't it pretty small for a skin? Uh, well, let's see. That's my hand right there. So, yeah. yeah. But isn't that just like off the around the neck of the bird? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's not the whole it bird. It is. Yeah. No, no. It's just the rest uh, of the bird's kind of red, isn't it? Yeah, the rest of the bird, they're actually kind of pretty. Yeah. And I like the feathers that Let's see, I don't think I have any on this. Let's see. One of the reasons I was asking is because I think. No. You know, I've looked for a nice jungle cock, and I think that I've always assumed I would find a large skin. And I oh yeah, I large supply. I found them because I wasn't looking and wasn't brave enough to ask. <laughs> you know, I think that's like the silver pheasant. I mean, for, I looked for three years for silver pheasant, and I went up to Anchorage, and lo and behold, in my mail, about six months later, several of them showed up. So I know where they there's just a live had a one. Place, huh? <laughs> I know where there's a live one. Ah, there you go. Oh, wait a minute, Gaston's. That's right. They exactly. Have there's a live one at Gaston's. Yeah, they have all yeah. these birds there. It's really yeah. kind of nice. Yeah. This is the way yeah. I thought they came. Can you see mine? Oh, here. Let me let me move, yeah. Sherry, see. and I will. I will. Uh, oh, you've got your background on. 
That doesn't work, does it? Ah, see. Oh. Peggy, that Anchorage source um, dried up. It. Art and I bought all they had, and they shortly after went out of business. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, that's yeah. He's the one that sent him to me. Well, yeah. um, this is Anne Marie. Um, I finally bought one, and yeah. I got it at the Somerset show. So Very whenever nice. comes, you, go. you know, go to New Jersey at the Somerset show, they have everything there from apply. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. Hmm. Well, Kathy uh, Crofts was telling us about. She's like, get all of your materials from your family friends so she uses dubbing from your jury tell us about that kathy yeah. from her from her dog she has pillows oh, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> um, um my siberian husky is a double coated dog and yeah. so of course she's got all that fine fleece yeah. underneath and yeah. really long guard hairs and over the 10 years that i had her i've got pillowcases worth of, <laughs> of her but oh, i also gosh. have you know, wildlife mounts. I've got moose yeah. and it gets shaved every now and then, bighorn sheep, white tails and things mm. like that that are hanging around the house. So, I mean, we could tie flies with all of our uh, sure. parts from the animal friends. Right. Yeah, I've done, I've used some, some of my dog's hair and I've got some groundhog and raccoon pelts from when I had in my terriers and, and fox and oh. I've used, I've trimmed some hairs off of those. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. One thing that works, I have a Dalmatian that sheds a tremendous amount. So um, when I put things in the dryer, I save the dryer lint. It's just oh, as yeah. good yeah. as, as rabbit. Oh, uh, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. I've got to tell you, my grandson, I went to their house this morning and um, he come running up to me with this little wad of stuff that must have been dog hair and human hair and who knows what all was in there. <laughs> he says, Can you tie a fly with this, Grandma? And how there old is he? Yeah. How old is your grandson? Five. Oh my gosh, he's that's great. Boy. He already knows. <laughs> I know. He's gonna be going gonna that's send funny. him out up with a root, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I was gonna say, he wasn't here looking under my bed, was he? <laughs> <laughs> it was a dust bunny from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh. Well, that um, really was a beautiful fly, Peggy. Mm, it All was right. fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, so I wish I was tying, but it'll be a while. So next week, uh, Tuesday night, is um, Fishing the Amazon. With, oh, my uh, goodness. Oh, wow. Maurice. And then um, we do have a women's trip going to the Amazon in 2022. Mm. So we will we'll be tying some flies uh, to catch peacock bass. Where in the Amazon? Uh, okay. we're, we're going to be um, on the Rio Negro, and um, he, he'll talk about that um, tomorrow. Oh, okay. We actually have permission yeah. from some um, of the Amazon tribes to go into oh, the wow. area. And uh, he actually <sighs> did a, um, they, they had nothing during COVID, so he actually was supporting, had, had groups that support um, mm. the Amazon tribes. And it's, it, and he, he discovered um, some fish in the Amazon and and said this is a new species and they didn't believe him because they said he doesn't have a doctorate. So oh, he went back huh. and got a doctorate. Oh, just oh wow! Oh yeah, so I wrote his dissertation on that. So um, he, oh, it's a, it's a great talk. He's yeah. a great guy. Um, he he gave us a trip uh, for the virtual expo, and uh, he has not had he's not done anything in a year. Oh and, my still, gosh. and still paid all of his employees in Brazil. He said, I support, I support mm. uh, 70 employees with wow. no work for a year. So um, mm. yeah, spread the word. Let's, um, okay. let's, let's, let's support Paul. Still he's a my, good guy. There you go. Yeah, and, like. I, and, and I'm happy that he's doing our tying group and not, he, um, not a big webinar. He likes the social, he likes the interaction. Mm. Good. Um, he likes cool. the more casual. So Next Tuesday, that's our speaker. Okay. Very good. We'll, we'll, uh, sounds good. Tie some, we'll tie some yes, thank back you. after that. Okay. All right. Thank you, right. Peggy. Cool. Yeah, yeah, thank thank you. Us, now that I get rid of my orange lips. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's take a look. Good to here. see everybody.
Good yes, night, definitely. Everyone. Hope we'll you get better you. quick. Good night. Hey, hey, it's going to be a while. Thank you, Peggy. Gonna that was great. Time, yeah. Get better soon, Susan, Thank with you. that shoulder. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>